Welcome to AP Human Geography, Chapter 3, Key Issue 2, where we look at where do people migrate within a country. We look at our own country, interregional migration within the United States of America. And we consider the changing center of population. Remember, throughout the early part of our history, people were living here on the eastern seaboard, on the east coast, and over the years, people migrated west. Let's take a look at how that pattern and why that pattern occurred. So in the 1790s, we've got colonial settlements near the coast, and people are pretty much staying all around here because they're blocked in by the mountains, the uh, Smoky Mountains, the Appalachian Mountains. So during this time period, pretty much everyone's setting up along the coast because there's established settlements, and that's where the center of population is. In the 1800s to 1840, we start to see the population center move west, meaning there's still people living here along the coast, of course, but the average amount of people living starts to move west as we get uh, better means of transportation. The big one is canals. Canals that are created open up the interior, and settlers learn to make use of all the trees in these areas, and they build their housing from that. Because certainly in the very beginning, people used log cabins to build their houses, but you would still see the type of construction with stones and such that you might find back in Europe along the coast, and you see that even today. But as people learn to make use of their surroundings, they use the canals and they open up the interior. So you start to see uh, people crossing the Appalachians from the 1800 to the 1840s. Then in the 1850s through the 1890s, something happens. It's the gold rush in California. And what people did is they didn't settle in the interior. They skipped the middle and went all the way to California, which is way over here. But that still brought the center of population more west, even though they skipped the middle. The other reason they skipped the middle is because farmland wasn't accessible in the middle of the country because um, the topsoil, they didn't see it to be um, fertile. They didn't know how to use irrigation techniques at the time to bring in amounts of water, and they didn't have the plow to get just a little bit underneath the Great Plains topsoil. Um, they actually called this area the Great American Desert. And it was only a little bit later when they discovered, well, actually, with a few techniques, this could be the most fertile breadbasket of the world. But from the gold rush, we started to see that advances in agricultural technology in the 1900s and 1940s, where we did use the plow to access just a little bit below the topsoil in the Great Plains. We learned how to irrigate a little bit, and we did have the ability to grow food and settle into the middle of the continent, which brought the center of population even more west. And then from the 1950s to current times, we see job opportunities and warm climate opened up so much of the west. So not only does the center of population start moving west, it starts moving south with job opportunities in places like Texas and along the Gulf Coast. It starts to move south. When we think about internal migration, of course, we think of the Trail of Tears. In our history of the United States, it was a very sad moment where they forced Native Americans to migrate west after the law which was put in place called the 1930 Indian Removal Act, where you had people moving from southeastern United States to Oklahoma. During this time, you had more than 46,000 um, uh, Native Americans uprooted, and many died along the way because they didn't do it in a very civil manner. They pretty much just marched them through terrible conditions all the way to Oklahoma. So we're seeing here a memorial at the start of the Trail of Tears in Chattanooga, Chattanooga Tennessee. Interregional migration in Russia. We've looked at the United States. Now we're going to take a look at Russia, which for a time was pretty much our competitor, and it still is to a certain extent. Um, we consider the United States to be the only superpower in the world, and yet we still look back at the history and we still have concerns about um, our competition with Russia. In any case, the Soviet government back in the day encouraged workers to relocate to areas such as Siberia in the far north to work in mines, factories, and construction sites near raw resources. And one of the situations with Russia is that they have so many resources. they got petroleum and minerals, um, silver and gold, and they've got a lot of it, but it's mostly up here in this region. And people don't necessarily want to go work there because it's a very harsh climate. So they would encourage people to move up here, but mostly they would leave because after one season, 
it was too harsh, it was too cold, it was too rugged and extreme. So another thing the Soviet government attempted to do was set up a program called Komsomol, where they had young volunteers, who were usually in college, to go work as volunteers in this area to support the government during their breaks from school. But that didn't really work out either. So Russia still struggles with getting a population of people up here to access their resources. We look at a few other countries where we have inter-regional inter migration, where we've got migration between regions. We've seen the United States and Russia, which were the two biggest land countries. Well, the other three biggest are Canada, China, and Brazil. Within China, we see people moving, uh, excuse me, within, yeah, we'll look at, we'll look at China first because it's on this map. Within China, we see people moving from the rural areas of the West to the cities of the East to find work. And over this period, we've seen 100 million people move east, leaving their farm jobs to seek jobs in the cities of the coast. Within Canada, we looked at people during the same time as the United States. They're moving west because of the gold rush. So the center of population in Canada pretty much echoes that of the United States. And in Brazil, it's pretty cool and different. What they did is they had so much population along the eastern seaboard, along their cities. Some of the largest cities in the world are Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Rio, Rio de Janeiro. Well, there was so much population, they needed more space. So they created the capital of Brasilia in the middle of their country, in the middle of the jungle in 1960. And we've seen the change in migration patterns in moving inward. And you can see the largest population growth today is in the orange and it's in the middle of the continent, excuse me, the middle of the country. We also have intra-regional migration where we have migration within the same region. The most common patterns are from rural to urban, from the country to the city where people are looking for jobs. We also have urban to suburban where people have lived in the cities and they wanna get out to the suburbs where they can have a different lifestyle, where they can have a bigger yard, they can not be worried about their safety, there's less crime, and there's better schools traditionally. The other pattern is people moving from urban to rural, going all the way from the cities to the country. And this is actually called counter-urbanization. Again, these people are doing it for a slower lifestyle. Uh, they want to um, not necessarily be caught up in traffic. They don't mind maybe growing their own food because it, they enjoy being outdoors in nature. So this is more prevalent today because we can still stay in contact. We can still run a business with technology even though we're in the country. And you can see the net migration here considering counter-urbanization of people leaving the cities going to the country. Where you've got a lot of growth is in areas that are traditionally thought of as in the country. Look, Colorado is seeing a lot of in-migration. People are moving into Colorado. That's not necessarily big city centers. Of course, you've got Denver, but not over here. This is people moving into the country. Wyoming, this is tons of just country. People are moving in because they want to counter-urbanize. They want to leave the cities for a different lifestyle. 